in this channel we talk a lot about graphic designers but today i'll be talking about freelancers don't worry if you're a graphic designer because you are also a freelancer so stick around to the very end of this video while i share with you eight mistakes freelancers make and you really have to avoid these mistakes So, as glamorous as some people make the freelance lifestyle seem, the road can get rocky at times. In other words, we have had our fair share of trial and error. However, learning from the career mistakes of others can be super cool. With that in mind, let's jump to the first mistake. I have to admit, when I first started my freelancing career, i was hesitant i wanted to be everywhere but it did not lead me anywhere in the end i ended up doing really broad mix of things in pretty much every sector and while i enjoyed some of the projects there were far more i did not enjoy the biggest downside was that i couldn't make a name for myself doing anything because i didn't do enough of any one thing the fight between a generalist and a specialist will probably never stop because here is the deal the world is more connected than ever and people have more choices than ever when you avoid specialization you miss out on an easy opportunity to cut out almost all of your competitors so what's my conclusion on this take one step at a time and you will surely get to the top you have to master one thing before you move to learning another the truth is i can't tell you not to learn many things but learn step by step till you master all marketing is very vital in building up a successful freelancing career but most people neglect it when the contract starts coming in marketing should be done all the time the good or the bad times so build up your online presence showcase your work and update it regularly so i know you'll be very very familiar with this setting prices for your services can be very very intimidating if it's too high you will lose the client and if it's too low you won't be able to pay the bills so how are you supposed to know what to charge well this is a common problem and one of the mistakes freelancers make repeatedly well i would say charge based on your worth and ensure you charge pay project and don't be afraid to take another look at your rates review them and negotiate accordingly so for that i'm going to recommend a video i made on how to raise or increase your prices as a graphic designer I'll link it here on the card or in the description so check it out after watching this video the truth is there is no secret formula to make you productive with a snap of a finger it's all up to you getting organized is the first step to improving your time management skills as a freelancer so for that i'm going to make a dedicated video about time management let me know down in the comments if you like to see a video like that this has happened to me time and time again years back where i work without any agreement and i end up regretting it this happens when you trust a client so much and being too trusting can be the downfall of a freelancer it's human nature but it's not good for business ensure you have your client sign a service agreement or contract before you get started on the work so you have a paper trial to point back to and legal rights to the money you are owed however contract exists to define expectations on both sides that extra step and all that legal jargon may seem like it's not worth it however a contract may offer you so much protection as a freelancer whether a client skips out on paying you or any disagreement along the way having that signed document in your corner will be a great asset networking with other freelancers is not a competition it's a collaboration you might say it's dumb to network with other freelancers and you'll be thinking they might compete with you well sometimes that might be the case but mostly it's the opposite it may be hard to find freelancers who have the same experience level as you but as a result of that you may likely meet freelancers who are more experienced than you and they will always give you projects 
when they have a lot of projects in their hands and they can always recommend clients to you this kind of relationship in your network can build strong bonds especially giving help and advice to others without expectations in return when you are nice to people without ulterior motives you find out that you are the first person they think of whenever there is any opportunity they like to share in the face of unexpected repairs, medical bills, or sudden job loss, having an emergency fund serves as the first line of defense against the ups and downs of life. Most finance experts will tell you you need three to six months of living expenses in savings as a rainy day fund. Yes, you read my headline right. Gas. It means gadget acquisition syndrome this happens when you are just starting out as a freelancer and you want to acquire as many gadgets as possible when you don't have enough money or enough budget for it when i first started out as a freelancer i saw a lot of gadgets online i wanted to have but then i didn't have enough money to purchase them and i had gas my honest advice to you would be don't have gas you have to take one step at a time and little by little those gadgets you need will come into place and don't be intimidated by other freelancers who started years back and are making it and you see them flaunting their gadgets online but then you always want to be like them it's not possible take one step at a time thank you so much for sticking around till the end of this video click on the video on your screen and learn more about graphic design thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time peace